thank you all for taking time to join. This is one of the most exciting opportunities we have to increase our understanding of what our real value is as nurse practitioners and physician assistants from when you get out of school and you're getting your first job to the first three to five years and then beyond. Um, understanding a real value is going to help you um, really maximize your earning potential. And we could not be luckier to have with us our friend and our true advocate, uh, Michelle Salentrup, is the CEO of MyDermRecruiter.com. And she has placed a tremendous amount of nurse practitioners and physician assistants in dermatology. And that's important because she is an expert in the space of dermatology. And that's essential if you want to maximize your value in our field. And so, again, it really is uh, our pleasure to have her join us. And she's going to go through some slides and then we'll have a fantastic Q&A at the end. So if you have questions as we're going, please enter them into the chat and uh, we'll go through them. And then at the end of the program, we'll be able to go through them all with Michelle. So without any further hesitation, we want to um, bring uh, onto the screen Michelle Salentrup, again, the CEO of MyDermRecruiter.com. Michelle, thank you for being here with us tonight. Of course. Thank you, Joe. Thanks to everyone who is attending. Um, my name is Michelle Solentrop. I am the founder and CEO of My Derm Recruiter. We're the number one dermatology recruitment firm in the nation. I've worked with dermatology providers since 2007. And because we, like Joe said, we're exclusive to dermatology, we place over 150 uh, derm professionals nationwide every year in new opportunities. Um, because we are 100% dedicated to dermatology, we work with groups of all sizes. So, you know, small one doctor practices all the way up to the big giant national groups. So we have experience in all of those areas, placing um, NPs and PAs. Um, so we really do have expertise wrapped around offers, negotiation, contracts, all of that. Um, so we can absolutely be a resource for you on that. Um, we're currently representing about 800 jobs across the country. So over 120 of those are in Durham NP and PA jobs. So you can visit our website, um, obviously mydermrecruiter.com, check those out. Um, but if you're looking for a new opportunity now or sometime in the future, we can absolutely help you with that. Totally free to you. All of our costs is paid for by our clients who have asked us to go out and find top talent for them. Um, I will tell you too, a lot of people, when I say that, they're like, oh, well, you work for the client then. We really don't. We really work for you um, because you're we're organically aligned to match you up to exactly what it is you're looking for. You're not going to take a job unless it's what you want and it meets your value, right? So we're definitely working for you guys and our clients know that too. So it's kind of a special, uh, special relationship with our candidates and we really love it. We enjoy it. So our goal today is to help you maximize your value. We're going to use that word a lot. Um, it's your value to your employer by understanding how they view your worth, as well as how you represent and present your worth to them. Um, so we'll get into specifics about compensation and we'll share with you details on contracts offered to our last five hires at the end. So you'll see real life um, uh, placements that we made in the last 30 days. Um, but we can get started with our introduction on our first slide. So I, I like this slide because it gets you thinking, um, do you think in the position you're in now, whether you have eight months of experience or 25 years of experience as a Durham and PPA, do you think you're getting paid what's fair? Um, or what you deserve in your current opportunity? Um, and do you know if it's competitive with what your colleagues are making out there? And as a PA or an MP, it's super important that you understand what value you bring to a practice. Um, and we all know that most medical care in America is, including dermatology, is a for-profit you know, enterprise. And your role in that is to make sure you know how to maximize your value to the practice you work for. So we'll use that word a lot. Think about that as we're going forward and reviewing a little bit about um, how your values perceived yourself and then how that employer sees it as well. we'll go to our next slide. So 
So I kind of call production the dirty word of dermatology um, because, you know, uh, production and expenses and all those words they don't teach you in um, becoming a medical professional, um, they directly affect your overall value to the practice. I always say it seems a little harsh, but it's the truth. The employers out there nationally, they want it all. You know, they want you to be a skilled provider. They want you to treat everyone well, earn a practice, earn profit for their practice. And your worth lies in being able to leverage your skills with what you want to give to that practice, right? Because you have to know, you know, I want to be part-time. My priorities, my kids right now, I want to be full-time and maximize my earning potential. You have to know what you're after, right? But your worth lies in being able to leverage your skills with that level of commitment that you're willing to give to a practice at maximum profit. Well, what do we mean by leverage? It's getting that maximum advantage. So keep that in mind too, as we're, as we're looking forward, we want to make sure that, um, when you go in and you look at any opportunity, or if you're in a position now and you're up for um, an annual review, or it's about time for you to have a raise that you're thinking about how do I leverage what I've given and provided to the practice I'm at already to get that next raise, that next bump. Or if I'm looking at a new opportunity, how do I leverage what I've done, what I've I've accomplished to make them see my value. And we can do the next slide, please. We're running through these first ones kind of quick, just to lay that foundation for you a little bit. And the next ones will be a, a little bit longer. Um, but there's factors, the major factors that affect your compensation. They absolutely, like I was saying before, depend on what you're willing to give to the practice, right? So how many days a week that you work? how many hours a day you work, how many patients you see in a day. You know that, that a lot of practices are always pushing up, pushing up volume. Some don't, they keep it manageable for you. That's great. Um, patient volume and collections, whether they tell you or not is king to a lot of practices. Um, but quality of care also ranks very high as it should, right? Um, that should be number one everywhere. Um, but again, we go back to that. It is a pro for-profit business. So have you ramped up your skills and areas to add to your per patient production for the practice? Or is that a foreign language to you, right? Are you even thinking that you're just like, I've got to see my patients get through it. We want you to think about these things because those are the data points and the facts that we again, get to use to leverage and get what you need and get your highest value back from the practice. Okay. So how are they measuring you? Um, Patient volume and collections for sure. Procedures, of course, um, excuse me. Um, Non-revenue value is a big deal um, as well. If you're performing any type of management, you're doing any type of sales of products, you're participating in social media, you're helping to run the Instagram page, um, whatever that may be. Um, those are all things that you can leverage. Um, you know, All of those are bringing value to the practice to negotiate for that higher base or percentage of collections that you're getting. Higher salary is what I mean by when I say base um, or percentage uh, is your bonus. So how can you show your value in those areas when you're ready to negotiate with your current employer or you're interested in looking at a new opportunity? So that is where our next slide comes into play. So knowing your numbers, this is not the fun part, right? <laughs> you're there to take care of patients and you're there to do a great job. Um, and that's your priority as it should be. But leveraging your data, which is your value to the practice is what gets you the most bang for your buck out of your employer. So knowing your numbers is key to negotiation and getting your worth, okay? So if you can't show a practice your value, if you don't know it yourself. So if you don't know the difference between production and collections, your practice does, and more than likely, you're being paid on collections only in your contract. So what you're producing is what you build out. Um, through insurance, through cash payments, whatever it may be. But what they're collecting, obviously, is what is the practice doing to collect those dollars in for you? So you know what you're actually 
getting bonused on, right? If they don't collect the money, you're not getting bonused. So 98% of those practices pay you based on collections and not production. So do you know what you produced last year versus what your practice was able to collect? And do you know what you collected the first quarter of this year? So in January, February, and March, your practice has those numbers. If your practice is not providing you these numbers quarterly, you have to ask for them. There are so many um, NPs and PAs that we work with that get them monthly. Now, depending on the EMR and your practice manager, um, it might be a little harder to pull this out of them, but set up a schedule with them where you're getting it quarterly. Um, so depending on the EMR you're using, it could be a report that your practice admin can run in minutes, but this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. So whatever it takes, you've got to get your numbers. You have to know what you produced and what they collected. By, redoing, by reviewing your production versus collection numbers, you can also hold that practice accountable, of course, on their responsibilities of collecting your money. You know, if you produced $100,000 in production, so that's what you build in a revenue, yet the practice only collected 70% of that, that probably would not be okay with you. Um, again, most practices are collecting 90 to 95% nationally. Um, and that's very true in Durham as well. Um, and obviously, you know, there are factors with every patient population, region, small town, things, um, different states, you know, that can affect your production. So how patient populations are insured, the type of insurers that your practice takes. Um, but again, however, they're they're getting those, those funds in, collecting that 99 to 95% is really important. So knowing the numbers your practice is collecting can also give you an insight on the stability and the overall financial position of the practice you're working for. So if a practice is unwilling to give you either a set of um, numbers, you know, either set of numbers, I should say, the production or what they're collecting, to me, that is a red flag. Um, if they don't know, that's not good because how are they calculating how they're bonusing you? Um, if they're not able, able to easily access it, you know, that it's a red flag, right? So, you know, it, it may be time to consider an exit strategy if they can't produce the proper numbers for you. Um, I talked to, unfortunately, a lot of NPs and PAs who came out of school. They took their first job because they really wanted to get in Durham, right? And love it. I'm so, so happy for them that they got into the specialty, but they may just be getting a base salary and that's it. And they don't get any production bonus. Don't feel bad if you're in that situation. It happens to a lot of people initially, but I will tell you that we will get you in a job where you're getting production bonuses. But um, when you get any amount of experience, you absolutely should be getting a production type bonus. So that directly relates to how much money you're bringing into the practice and therefore how much value you're providing to the practice. So it's important to know that you, you have to have those numbers because even if you're getting a salary, you want to know like, okay, well, I'm, I'm making 120,000 a year, but how much am I really bringing into the practice? We'll get into some percentage of what you should be making. But if you don't know those numbers, you can't negotiate. There's nowhere to go from that. So no matter what, get those numbers quarterly at the least. Um, I, I would say that is your number one thing to take away from this entire webinar is if you don't know your numbers, go get them tomorrow or well, not tomorrow because you're going to be on the holiday weekend, but um, go get those when you get back. Um, hopefully you'll be on a holiday weekend, um, but we can go to our next slide. So once you have those numbers, how do you use them to negotiate? So what I always tell all um, of our experienced and non-experienced, you know, maybe eight months of experience at Durham and P's or PAs or somebody who's been doing it five years is be prepared at all times um, so that you know how to negotiate either with your current practice on that meeting you're going to have um, at your annual review or when you decide you're going to be going out and looking for a new opportunity. But prepare today um, for a discussion, which you know is upcoming. It's either going to be that review or a new job, right? So I guarantee you, if you walk in to any meeting 
interview or review with your production numbers, you will garner more respect in your negotiations. Um, because you have taken the time to lay out your value to that manager or owner, and you're showing them that you are in this together as a partnership to make it a win-win for you and them and leading to, you know, that leads to a long-term relationship that's keeping both parties happy. They know that you're going to give them what they need. You know, you're going to be fairly excuse me, compensated. Therefore, um, everybody's happy. It's a win-win. So I always suggest that any PA or NP and physician for that matter, keep an ongoing kind of spreadsheet of their numbers from each quarter um, to track their progress and their value and real numbers for themselves and to be utilized in those instances for negotiation. Um, on this slide, I have the suggestion to use a one sheet production explanation. I cannot tell you how effective this is. This is something newer that I have been recommending to doctors as well um, as MPs and PAs in Durham. And that production explanation, we'll see a slide, our next slide when we get to it, we'll show you an example of it. Very simple, but it's really to display your numbers and value to the current practice manager or the potential new employer on a one sheet form. And what I love about it is it really gives you the power to highlight all of your non-money related skills as well. Um, obviously you have your things on your resume that are great, but what do your reviews look like on Google or ZocDoc? Are they okay? Are they great? You know, if you have stellar patient reviews on paper, some practices I know are still doing handing out the paper to the, the patient at the end of the visit and telling them to fill it out, get copies of those great ones. You know, your manager should be sharing those great ones with you anyway, hopefully, but, um, get copies of those. I always tell people that, um, if you have, you know, those seller reviews online, on Google, on Facebook, on Instagram, I say you should be collecting those like baseball cards. So anything that brings a great review to you and ultimately to the practice, that's a value to the practice that they can't buy for themselves. It's a hundred percent dependent on the value that you as their provider provide that quality care to patients brings them in more business. So very big win-win on that. Um, this production explanation sheet can be a game changer for new and very experienced MPs and PAs. So I'll show you that on my next slide. So this looks very plain and boring and simple because it is. <laughs> um, it's a super simple document, but it's extremely powerful. Um, I think every medical provider needs to have this. You can call it what I have a production explanation, a value explanation. Um, this is a big deal. Um, on your resume, you know, you're constantly adding, you know, new skills you learn, or of course you should be. Um, so you want to do the same by creating an addendum to your resume and call it this production explanation or value explanation. And if you look on here, a few things to note, this should just be a little one page yeah, th this is fantastic. And I think that, you know, it's great to put these numbers out there. And especially when you're young or, or newer in practice, showing that first year, don't be self-conscious about what your collections or production are, because um, you're not expected in that first year or so to be super productive, oftentimes you're working alongside someone else. So um, it, the important thing are these trends of growth to show that as you became more experienced, your uh, production and collection numbers increased. And as you were seeing, you if you're looking at this from a employer's perspective, you can see, okay, this patient, this um, MP or PA here has got four years of experience. They're seeing 30 patients a day. That's what we like to see in our practice. And um, you know, they can kind of make a determination on what your production will be based on what their specific practice is set up for. Yeah, absolutely. That is a huge point that I definitely want to make is that, you know, if you have eight months or nine months of experience, this might be intimidating to look at, right? You're like, uh, I only have nine months. But boy, what an advantage you have to start this now in your career, to log this information, know its importance, know how it will resonate with all of your current managers, future employers. So don't be self-conscious about this. This will grow. And, you know, I, I work with um, Casey D'Amato at uh, Physician 
assistant, um, certified physician assistant consulting. Um, she's a former in clinic Durham PA, and she does a lot of coaching on this stuff. So if you don't like how your sheet looks right now, maybe you've been in the industry for five or six years. Maybe you don't like how your sheet looks and maybe you're maybe it's the practice's problem. It's really not your problem, right? You're doing the best you can. You're there. You're ready to see patients. If you need a one-on-one -on -one coach for that kind of thing, I love Casey D'Amato at CPAC. She's awesome at that. I, I'll mention her in our next slide too, but um, she does a lot of that one-on-one. -on -one. So when you figure out what you want and what you want to go after, then we can help you do that by going out and helping you find that particular job. 